The Lord Ronan, welcome back to Miked Up, our, ch- our show here on churchmilton.tv, where we bring on some very interesting people and talk about some very interesting things, things that you'd like to know as Catholics and uh, Christians in general, as a matter of fact. And that leads us right into our next guest, Theodore Schobot. Hello, Theodore. This is Theodore from rescue, rescuechristians.org. And he has some very uh, interesting uh, information about Christianity and what's going on in the Middle East. Theodore, how are you? Welcome. I'm very good. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on, sir. Yeah. T- well, tell us a little bit first of all about yourself and your organization. You know, who are you and what's your organization? Well, my name is Theodore Schubert, and I am the spokesperson for an organization called Rescue Christians. And it was just me, my father, and our agent uh, Keith Davies. We founded this uh, group, this organization called Rescue Christians, in back in 2010. When we were getting the various emails from people in Pakistan who were saying that they were being persecuted. So what we did is we contacted uh, various organizations, uh, Voice of the Martyrs and others, and we realized that they don't really do anything. We're saying, well, we have this person in Pakistan who's being pursued by mobs or being pursued by the government under uh, the pretenses of blasphemy law. A Christian. And they say, right, well, these are Christians. And they say, well, uh, we don't really do anything. We just raise awareness. And we realize that all these groups, they just raise awareness all day. They don't actually physically get these people out of the dangerous area that they're in. So what we what we did is we got a team. We formulated a team in Pakistan. We can't get their identities, but we have a team in Pakistan. And what we do is through funds, through money, we physically get them out of Pakistan and into nations such as Sri Lanka. And we place them there, and they live safely. We, we also provide them with safe houses and with food and with medical, medical care as well. Our team, the team that we have, is extremely zealous. Let me just give you an example. Our guy in Pakistan, one of our head guys in Pakistan, uh, he found out that there was a, a little girl and a little boy who were kidnapped, and they were placed in a, in a home, a Muslim home. He actually broke into the house himself and rescued the two children personally. And when the Muslims in the house saw him, they opened fire, and he had a number of bullets into his body. He was sent to the ER. We paid his medical bill. And by the next day, he was out of the hospital going back to work uh, as it was. We really th- Sounds we- like something out of the born identity. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. I mean, and, and, and we tell people in America, we say, listen, your brethren is being persecuted. And let's not forget. Christians cannot forget this. See, back in the Middle Ages, there was immense persecution from Muslims in the Middle East. And the Eastern Church— the Eastern Church was it was on the verge of annihilation. Mm-hmm. What did the Western Church do? What did Pope Urban II do? He did a crusade. It's called crusades, right? Well, nowadays we can't do crusades, even though I would like to do one. <laughs> we can't do crusades. Uh, we so we have to use money. We have to legally take people out of these countries, mm-hmm. and it's very difficult. But so far, we have saved over a thousand people. Uh, well, and congratulations! We, That's awesome news. Well, thank you. But uh, we, we wish we can save more. And what we tell people is, listen, Jesus told us about this. And he said in Matthew 25, and all these people are saying, oh, you know, all you need is Jesus to be a Christian. And we say, listen, look at Matthew 25. I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was in prison. You did not visit me. I was thirsty. You did not give me drink. I was naked. You did not give me clothing. Oh, Lord, when were you naked? When were you hungry? When were you in prison? And he says, go away from me. I never knew you into the lake of fire. Yep. He cast these people into the lake of fire. So this is not a small deal in Christianity. And Christ says that whatever happens to the least of these, my brethren, it happens unto me. And that's why he tells St. Paul, Paul, why do you persecute me? So the persecution that happens against the church is happening against Christ. And Christ wants us to help the persecution. It's not just a little thing that some Christians do and some Christians don't do. This is an obligation that behooves all Christians in the Christian world. And let, me, and let me just give you a number of examples of, of what happens in these countries. Uh, there was recently a family that we are supporting. is a family of a woman named Ta- uh, Tanya Rubeka. She was a, a Christian girl. She was kidnapped, thrown into a car. She, was, she had uh, chemicals placed on her nose so she can fall asleep. When she woke up, she was raped, gang raped multiple times by, by multiple men and told her that she must convert to Islam. They tied her on a tree with a rope, cut her body slowly, burned her body with, with, with cigarettes, raped her multiple times, and then, put, and then told her that she was now Muslim. They then sold her into slavery to another Muslim family. The fa- her family, her real family, the entire time was searching for her. Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? 
and they and they finally found out she was sold to some family. They didn't even know where the house was. Eventually, they found this girl and they brought her back to to their home. But it, this this went this was within a time of, of within a year actually. Another story in Lahora of this year, I believe in March of this year, they took the uh, the Christian homes. Over two hundred Christian homes in Lahora burnt down. We found a video that was filmed in Lahora by someone there. We put we put the video on rescuechristians.org, and it shows this family walking into their home after this great riot and saying, where is our safe? All the money that they've been saving for their entire lives is gone. The safe is gone. And then they say, where is my daughter? Where is my daughter? The daughter is gone. There is no one there. There is no one there. The daughter is gone. And we, we, I must ask the audience, how would you like it to live every day not knowing whether your entire life savings will be taken away, whether your house will be burned down, whether your daughter will be taken to be a sex slave for the rest of your life, for the rest of her life if you don't find her? And the chances of you finding her is, will take a miracle, actually. This is the lives that Christians live, the saints live every day in Pakistan. And in, you look into the book of Revelation. I saw the saints that in heaven who were beheaded for the sake of Jesus Christ. We, we talk about the persecution that happened under pagan Rome. But we're not talking about the persecution that's taking place right now. And when we look into the history of the church... We find out that after, for example, after the, the death of Constantine, the Arian heresy took the roots of the government in the Roman Empire, and they began to kill the Christians who believed in the Trinity. Well, this is what Islam is. Islam is merely the Arabian offshoot of the Arian heresy, and they are killing the people who they see are, are wrongly believing in the Holy Trinity. And that's why they're killing these people. We don't realize that the devil is after those who believe in the Holy Trinity. Theodore, let me ask you, uh, I, I mean, if you have, uh, your organization has mm -hmm. saved a thousand uh, Christians in Pakistan, over, over what time period? Since 2010. Okay, so in the last handful of years. I mean, yes. That's hundreds a year, and those are just the ones you're able to save. Yes. We've got to presume that it's, it's a multiple factor of the ones who are not saved that may not even ever pop up on your radar. So that's, that's right. that sounds like business as usual in Islamic countries with regard to Christians. Oh, definitely. And there's, a, there's, there's tremendous amounts of stories that have not been reported. And one of them that wasn't reported by the news, the only reason why I know this story is because from someone that was there. Sure. Uh, for example, in, uh, in, in, uh, I believe in Nigeria, the Muslims, they believe that if they drink the blood of the Christian, they have power, divine power. They believe that Allah will give them salvation if they kill a Christian. It gives them salvation. Well, let me ask you, why is this stuff, do you think, not being reported here in the West? That's a very good question. Uh, for example, and this is what I tell people. We have the leftist government of ours giving weapons to the rebels in Syria. The rebels are using those weapons, are using those weapons to kill Christians. Let's not forget what happened in the village of Malula. Malula was a, was a Catholic city, was a Catholic village, one of the oldest villages in Christian history. And they took that village and they took a number of Christians, lined them up and said, if you do not convert to Islam, we will behead you. And they were all beheaded. They went, and they went into a, a local store. They took a man and they said, they said to him, if you don't convert to Islam, we will kill you. He refused. They slit his throat. They called up his fiancée and they said, we just slit the throat of your husband. And Jesus never came to save him. This is the diabolical roots of this religion. And, the di and, and to answer your question, the media is not reporting it because the media is of this world. And they are in line with the diabolical, as you know very well. Sure, absolutely. And, and the people in America who are supporting the sodomites, who are supporting the homosexual agenda, the homosexual agenda, which says, if you don't accept homosexuality, you're going to get a lawsuit. The, the state of Iowa just did a lawsuit against the Mennonites because they refused to have a, a homosexual wedding in their wedding center. Mm -hmm. And the same people who want to persecute Christians in America are the same people who are supporting the persecutors of Christians in the Muslim world. And this, I believe, is not a coincidence. No, no, do, no, not at all. Not at all. If, I mean, if, if you elevate the, all of these examples to the spiritual plane, which is really where they're that's really where, yes. where it resides at the beginning and the end of the day. Uh, it's not very hard to figure out what's going on. Do you think that there is uh, uh, a, a growing awareness, enough of a growing awareness among 
uh, Catholics and uh, other Christians about what actually is going on in these countries? Or in- there, well, of course, there is an awareness because we're, we're, people like myself were talking about this almost on a daily basis. Sure. But but the the question isn't awareness. It's more so is there enthusiasm to help the cause? Mm-hmm. Because I can tell, I've told many people about persecution and most of them don't really care. So the question isn't awareness. The question is more, do they have zeal? Do they have enthusiasm and the question and the answer is most people really don't uh, on both sides protestant and catholic uh, and i have talked to uh, one for example i have talked to a catholic priest one time and i asked him i said listen let's do something for the persecuted can i just talk to your congregation can i do something to where to raise awareness to get people to join this cause and they're just they don't care i mean they they'll tell you right there listen we're not interested in this we're not doing this this is not our calling our calling is to do mass every 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 day and it's like well yes do mass yes of course talk about our lady mary but uh, i think mary would like for us yeah. to help her children uh so let, let's get one thing clear uh to to help the church and and, and another thing uh, we, and we've talked to pastors on the other on the other side of the coin and i would say out of all the pastors that we have talked to on all within all denominations well, not, not all but within a scale of denominations um, I would say only about one of them has actually openly helped us in our, in our cause. Let me ask um, you something, Theodore. We just got a couple of minutes left, so people can understand kind of the process. So, sure. Uh, the website again is rescuechristians.org. Rescue Christians. Right, yes. I've got it up on my screen right now, my big screen here, because I have glasses, and if I don't have a big screen, I have to put on glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we're looking at that, and somebody says, "Okay, so how much money does it take, for example?" Oh to kind of run the what I'm just sort of loosely calling like a born identity operation to smuggle people out. Like there's probably not some fixed dollar figure. There's probably depends on where it is and who you have to enlist to help and pay off and that sort of, of thing. But well but, it ranges with it, to answer your question, it ranges within the thousand. But to the audience, I just want to make this very clear. If you go to our website, you have the option of giving how much money you want. Mm-hmm. So you can give ten dollars. You can give 25, you can give 30. It doesn't matter. Just give what you can. Remember the story of the woman with the two coins. Mm -hmm. She gave what she could and Christ honored that. Remember the story of the talents. The man says, if only you gave that one talent and just gave a little bit of interest in the bank, I would have been satisfied. Mm -hmm. We have to remember we can just give within our limits. We don't have to be millionaires. I guarantee you that all the money that you give will go directly to supporting the families. Because we don't make a dime out of this. We don't make any money out of this. This is a thing that we're doing on the side. We don't make any money. So all the money you give, whether it be $5, $10, $25, and you also have the choice of giving a monthly donation or you can give just one donation of, of however much money you want to give. It doesn't matter. Let me ask you, you, let me ask you Theodore, walk, walk us through. We've got less, about a minute and a half to go here. Walk us through when somebody gives, like, what is the process? Like, you know, somehow you are, does, is everything orchestrated by you guys there at Rescue Christians? Well, we uh, have a team in Pakistan who knows the terrain. We okay. don't know the terrain. Okay. We have a team there of people in Pakistan who know the terrain. We have to give them, a, we, first thing, we have to get them the legal documents to, to get out. So we have to give them, sometimes they're wanted men. So we have to disguise them to illegally get them out. I mean, there's all these factors involved here. So, uh, so, then, so the money gets used to produce documents, maybe to pay off bribes to get people to look the other way so you can go across the border, all that kind of yes. very kind of covert, involved. clandestine stuff. It's very much so. Also, we have to pay for airline tickets to get them out. Sure. Uh, so all these things, all these factors, it takes a lot of money in, in a country like Pakistan when you have it, like, like you gave me the experience of yourself in Nigeria, mm-hmm. there's a tremendous amount of red tape. Yeah, you know, I know I, what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing. The second you start moving money around in uh, you know third world countries, uh, it, it's particularly if it's American money, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. U.S. dollar, it, it, all of a sudden there's red flags going up all over the place. And uh, so, well, I, I'm guessing this is quite the complex operation. It's very complex, and to also add to what you just said, for it's amazingly with because Satan is the lord of this world. When we want to do evil and useless things. When the church wants to do evil or useless things, 
it's completely easy for them to do it. Yeah. <laughs> we want to do a good cause. Every difficulty you can think of comes before you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm right with you. I understand a thousand percent. <laughs> yes. Theodore, your organization, rescuechristians.org. You can go to it, folks, rescuechristians.org. Uh, you know, it's, advise you. Seriously, take a look at this and uh, take what Theodore said to heart. You know, it is our responsibility to help those in need. Uh, and here's a legitimate need of helping Christians who don't just need help. They're trying to save their lives and getting out from under what is uh, essentially a very evil regime that we just don't hear about here in the West. So, Theodore Shobot, thank you very much, rescuechristians.org. Hopefully some people will go to it here and uh, help you help others. God bless you, sir. God bless. Thanks very much, Theodore. Everybody, when we come back, we will be talking to Michael Hitchborn about the new Obama ambassador to the Vatican and his ties, because he was the head of it, to the Catholic Relief Services and this great big huge scandal that no matter what many of the U.S. bishops say simply will not go away. We'll be right back right after this. Michael Voris launched his apologetics mission with his groundbreaking series, The One True Faith. This series, with over 100 hours of orthodox commentary, covers every possible Catholic topic in tremendous detail. To explore The One True Faith, sign up for a premium membership today. 